Right, sorry, I've got two devices on the go today. Um, right, so thank you all for coming. Um, I'm Sol and uh, I'm a product manager here at Cover um, for the web team. So I do internal product, the website, uh, and then I also manage tech ops. Uh, it's not quite how we want it to work, but uh, I'll mention that later on, uh, later on in speech. So um, firstly, does everyone know what Cover is and what we're doing? No? Cool. Uh, some of you do. That's good. Um, well, for those of you that don't, uh, we're, we're building insurance the way it should be, not what you're used to. Uh, so it's incredibly fast, uh, simple, and approachable. And you can either insure someone's car for as little as an hour, uh, or you can purchase travel insurance uh, as your plane takes off, uh, which is pretty cool, um, without having to use price comparison sites. So no meerkats, admirals, or fat opera singers, uh, which is great. Um, so to start off uh, with the talk, I'm going to start with a little story. Um, yeah, there's quite a few gifts throughout this presentation. Sorry, I don't, I don't really like to write much, so uh, you'll have to bear with me. Um, so the story, well, I was at my, uh, my dad's house the other day, and he was um, on the phone to Barclays, of all people. He received a message, uh, an email from them uh, saying that he'd applied for a mortgage. Uh, which he hadn't actually done. Um, so he emailed them back stating that someone else must have tried to do that uh, in his name, got no response. Uh, so he bravely decided to uh, give him a call. Uh, he was waiting on hold for about 30 minutes, I think, at least. Uh, finally reached someone. They couldn't help him, funnily enough. Uh, so he, he then uh, has, yeah, has to go on hold for a bit longer finally reaches someone that can help. Uh, they say that someone uh, had used his, they, they thought that someone had used his account to log in to, uh, well, to, well, for fraudulent, fraudulent activity. Uh, that wasn't the case, obviously. He, all he wanted to do was try and get some bank statements so that he could apply for a real mortgage. He didn't do the one through Barclays, but with someone else. They said that they'll send them to him in seven days, uh, which is great customer service. Uh, so he then receives the statements these statements weren't actually his, but they were my sister's, uh, which is, yeah, interesting. Uh, so he calls them up again, uh, which is starting to get annoying, as you can imagine. So he holds, holds, holds again, uh, gets through to someone finally, uh, and then asks for the correct statement, waits seven days, gets them, great, done. Uh, but then he immediately closes all of his accounts and switches to Starling. Uh, sorry for those Monzonauts in the crowd. Uh, but that was his choice. Um, <laughs> so why is this the case? Um, surely it isn't difficult to, to improve these things, right? Uh, and this isn't necessarily as a result of uh, like clueless support agents. They generally know what they're doing. Uh, it's usually uh, these companies don't think that internal process or tooling is something that uh, needs to be focused on, or if they do, uh, they don't have the capability to do so. Um, I mean, it's not bringing in money, right? So it's quite difficult to prioritize. Uh, so, quick question uh, before we continue. Raise your hands. Like, how many people here are custom focused? Oh, good, as I expected. Uh, focusing on UX? Yes, uh, yeah, I assume so. Um, sorry, data driven? Great. Um, and how many people do this for your internal staff and employees? Use any of these techniques? Good, we've got a few people. Uh, but the majority, no. Uh, and that's completely understandable. This is usually the case for most businesses. Um, and I totally get it. Um, it's, it's easy to forget about your internal users, especially when business objectives are so kind of customer focused and uh, revenue focused. So um, we move on. Um, it is incredibly important to uh, think about the full stack experience, um, especially uh, when, like what, so for example, what happens uh, if your customer support are slow at resolving a problem, you usually get pissed off customers. Pissed off customers usually go and look somewhere else, like my dad did. Um, and then it becomes a little bit more obvious that internal processes and tooling uh, are incredibly important. Uh, perhaps if we improve them, we lose fewer customers, uh, increase loyalty, and then in turn, obviously, grow revenue. But this is only one part of the picture. What about employee satisfaction? Do we want our COPS uh, customer operations team, that's what we call them, uh, spending all their waking hours dealing with pissed off customers? Not really. How does that affect their mental health? Probably quite a lot. Uh, what does it do to the employee retention? Um, 
And also, if, a, if one person can handle more customers, how many people do we need to hire? Probably much fewer, much less, or whatever it is. Um, all important questions. Uh, with all this in mind, you don't want more companies. Uh, why, sorry, why don't more companies focus on improving employee experience uh, through their internal tools? Uh, mainly because the stances usually are they have to use it. So kind of just get used to it. You'll, you'll learn how to use it. You'll get better the, the more you use it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the thing is, is we're used to, we're all used to incredibly uh, well-designed uh, products in outside of work and even in work sometimes. Um, so forcing employees to uh, use janky, poorly designed uh, products for nine hours a day, uh, 20, like five days a week or however, however long they learn, uh, is kind of, uh, well, it's very inefficient and it's quite frankly unacceptable. Um, so spending real time analyzing your employee user stories, building dashboards internally, or finding suitable third party solutions, um, and constantly testing and iterating uh, on them will, will help address a lot of these problems. Uh, so where are we going next? Sorry. Uh, so at Cover, we find this is less something that we have to do as a, uh, a cost center. It's more something that we want to do as a profit center. And we actually see this as a strategic advantage, um, as I'll talk about later. Like, this is one of our core USPs, is having good customer service. Uh, as a result of this mindset, and of course, our incredible customer operations team, uh, we have, or we believe we have exceptional support. Uh, and I do have a few stats to, uh, to prove it. So what does this look like? Um, well, 100% of our team, so everyone in the team, not just our customer operations, all, all on site, not, nothing outsourced, are 100% trained in customer support. We all have to do four hours a month, um, which is great, actually quite enjoyable. Um, we're never closed, so 24 hours, seven days a week, uh, we're, we're always open, always ready to respond, always ready to solve your problems. Uh, and even doing this, we still manage to maintain a 56 second uh, medium response time. Uh, and that, as you can see, that's, that's getting faster. So, how do we do internal products? Uh, so how do, we do, how do we achieve this? One of our core USBs, as I mentioned, is our customer service. We have a team of customer operations, uh, so COPS, that handle inbound customer requests from our customer base of over 300,000 now. Uh, and we need to be able to res respond to them and solve their problems super quick. Um, unlike the majority of brokers and insurance companies we, who typically re require you to pick up a phone, uh, you can do it through our in-app chat and we'll get back to you, as I mentioned, in around 50 seconds and we'll actually resolve your problem in around three minutes. Pretty cool. Um, in order to do this, we use a few different third-party tools as well as our own. So we use Ravelin for our uh, fraud, uh, fraud prevention. Um, we use Intercom for handling our customer issues. Um, we use our own uh, internal dashboards to kind of view user profiles uh, and action any requests that they have. And then we use Stripe for our payment data. Um, so just before I get started on how we kind of build it, I'll do a quick demo on uh, what the product actually is, or a small snippet of what the product actually is, just so that when I'm talking about the next steps, you kind of have a feel for what, what it is that we, what we do, or what it is. So let's go to the other. So I've got my lovely assistant over here, Alex. He will send a message from support from the, the chat. There we go. Help. I can't buy insurances. So I won't click this because it won't take us to the dev environment, uh, but we have it open already. So what will happen is we, from Intercom, we immediately take us, it will immediately take you to the user, uh, the uh, customer dashboard, the operations dashboard, where you'll see their user profile. As you can see along the top, we've got uh, identity, uh, other subscription, which is a legacy product, taxi, promos, incidents, quotes, and policies. So basically, everything that you need to see is here. So in this case, uh, we'll look at um, why Alex is having an issue. So he has, it's been a while since I've done customer support. No, I'm joking. He, um, so what's the problem? So let's have a look at the events. No recent events, that's fine. So, as we can see here, there's a, a, a freeze on his account because there was an invalid policy photo. Uh, so we can then, what we then would do is we go into his uh, chat and we'd, we use our safe responses. If they, they, I don't think they exist in this environment, but that's fine. So we'd say something like, um, 
the safe response for this one is bad photo last vehicle. So I'm just going to say that just for the sake of argument. Last vehicle. And that will ask him to send a new uh, photo to us. So he'll then do that. I'm not going to actually make him do that. If he's, oh, he's done it already. There we go. Um, and if that is indeed a picture of a vehicle, then we'd go to his account. Uh, we then got that on record uh, within Intercom, and then we would unfreeze the account, uh, which I can do here. So you can now purchase again, which is cool. So that was a quick kind of insight. That's just one of the many problems that we have, um, but it really allows our customers to do things super quickly, and, and we work day in, day out to try and improve those little flows. Uh, so back to the presentation. Um, so how do we how do we make this work more seamlessly? Like we're happy with how it is, but how do we make it better? Um, so the first thing that we do, um, all of these you guys will probably be aware of because this is what people usually do for their external customers. Uh, but we've we adopt this and use this for our internal users. So uh, I'll give you a brief overview on how we do that. Um, so user interviews and shadowing. Um, we we often sit down with our cops uh, to make sure that we can dive deeper into the problems and inefficiencies they're having. Um, we use carefully curated non-leading questions as you would in any user interview to try and surface these issues. Uh, try not to lead them down a path and try not to get them to tell you what you want to hear so you can build what you want to build, uh, which obviously happens sometimes, but that's fine. Um, one example of this technique proving successful is with our disputes. So disputes, uh, many of you will be aware, um, when someone uh, disputes a payment, they don't think they've done it. They've made that payment, so they then tell their bank. Uh, we then get disputes coming through into our Stripe dashboard. Uh, currently, our customer operations team has to go through. They have to take, take step away from their day-to-day -day work, go to go through a massive list of disputes and go through them one by one and see uh, submit uh, evidence to try and contest them. Um, so we thought, well, there's probably a better way of doing this. And we only found out that this was actually a really time-consuming thing when we sat down with uh, the COPS team. Uh, we started to do it ourselves, uh, and, and then we came up with this solution where I'll talk briefly later about um, the task queue, but what happens is uh, as soon as a dispute comes in, it will throw it into the task queue, uh, and then in there you can kind of follow the checklists of what you need to do, gather all the evidence you need, and then submit it in one go into Stripe, uh, which is pretty cool, and it saves a lot of time. Um, so... Oh. Sorry, press the wrong button. Next up, eCop. Uh, so this is something that we uh, came up with, uh, which is an eCop is an embedded cop, and that's a member of the cop, uh, customer operations team who is directly involved with the product team, so our product team and the other product teams, uh, so that we can get constant feedback on anything. So we we find it incredibly useful because we're there are users. Um, but then the other teams also find it very useful because they're constantly talking to customers on a daily basis. Um, so they join our weekly planning meetings. Uh, they help us prioritize things based on the stuff that they're seeing and witnessing, which is really useful. And we then dedicate one day uh, a week of our time in order to uh, fix this, uh, fix these problems. This is like this is super good for uh, employee satisfaction, uh, and it also means that we're constantly iterating on the stuff that we do ship. Um, obviously, you can you can have it sometimes where you ship something and then you just leave it, and move on to the next thing, uh, which is something that we don't want to happen, and we we're constantly trying to get better at. Next up, as I've mentioned, I won't go into that in too much detail, but everyone on support, this is really useful. We often see when an engineer goes on support, uh, something magically gets fixed, uh, which is a shock. Um, when they have to go and actually work on it, then uh, and it's a pain in the ass, then they, they want to fix that super quick. Uh, so that's really, really useful. User story mapping, again, something that is quite common. Um, but maybe not so much in this in this context. Um, so we obviously map out the current processes to find any pain points uh, and inefficiencies in that. Uh, we then uh, we're then able to highlight these these and then try and hopefully find a solution to this. A good example where we've done this is with our watch list uh, feature, which we're just about to start building. Again, another really boring bit of work that has to be done where um, you go through a spreadsheet. There's loads of people on the list that may have come from like the IFB or the IFR um, or people that we've put on the watch list. And you've got to go through them, I think, every day in order to uh, see if they're committing any naughties. 
uh, and uh, make sure that they, if, if they are, then you ban them. So, but the trouble with that is that if they haven't been doing anything, you've just gone through a list of over a hundred people um, that, that haven't been doing anything. So you've just wasted a load of time not to even ban the, ban the user. So what we've, what we've uh, done is we've come up with a new concept where actually a watch list doesn't exist. Um, and you have a set of rules uh, in the system that if someone uh, triggers them, then they get flagged in the task queue, which I keep on mentioning, I will, I will tell you about later. Um, and then you can see all the information you need uh, to, in order to make a decision. A-B testing, another popular one, um, in order to valid validate the solutions that we've already created, uh, or we've already come up with, and validate anything uh, that we've got from the qualitative feedback that we got from our customer operations team uh, in the user interviews, we, we're now able to uh, A-B test any of our solutions. So what we do is we, we use the same system that we do in the apps uh, with config flags. We'll roll out uh, the solution to, let's say, like five of our customer operations team, usually training or senior, senior cops. Um, they'll go through it. They'll give us then some qualitative feedback on that. Um, and then we compare that to the other, the other bucket, um, which is, yeah, again, really useful and stops us wasting unnecessary engineering time and design time, whatever, uh, in order to solve that problem. Analytics metrics, obviously more data means you get more speedy cops. Uh, so we, when I first joined, we didn't have any analytics in the dashboard, um, and now we are starting to put some in, which is great. This means that we can make far more informed decisions, again, validating that qualitative data um, in order to uh, make sure that we're, we're actually solving the problems that, that are occurring. Um, this also helps us make much faster decisions, which is fantastic. Um, and we also had a difficult blocker that was stopping us from doing this to begin with. And that was uh, because we have a lot of PII on our uh, uh, customer operations dashboard, we, we couldn't embed any foreign JavaScript on the page. So what we needed to do is build our own API client um, for Mixpanel so that now we can send our analytics data to Mixpanel. So hopefully one day we'll have full coverage. Com communication and transparency is really important, especially at Cover. Transparency is one of our key kind of, um, uh, what's the word? values uh, <laughs> so we always make sure that we're every time we make a feature change or new, we release a new product within the within the dashboard or anywhere else uh, we always make sure that we announce it uh, make cops aware where where things might go wrong and if they do then please flag us or even if, even if they don't like it if it doesn't work the way that they want it to the ui is poor then they can also tell us there we also have a Notion page where everything that we're doing and working on is all documented, so they can all, they can always see what we're working on, what we're about to release, what we have released, all that sort of stuff. So, uh, as I, yeah, all of these things that I mentioned before, uh, uh, we're used to as product managers, but only for our, uh, external customers. Um, and as you can see, if you if you do adopt them correctly, you can really make a difference when you're, especially when it comes to customer support really keep those times down and, and be able to help customers efficiently. Uh, so where do we want to be? Um, well, we want to continue to automate um, all the manual tasks that I mentioned earlier where necessary using the task queue. So now I'll tell you what the task queue is. So basically uh, the task queue, is, our goal for the task queue is to have everything in one place. It's a system that will bring uh, any task right in front of our customer operations team. So they only have to remain there. Um, they'll be able to do anything from talking to customers eventually to even answering the doorbell or answering the phone, which is super cool. And that's all based off like uh, SLAs. So if something's more important than one of, the, one of the other tasks, it will push it in front of you. Or if you see an important one coming, you go, okay, maybe I shouldn't do this task and I palm it off to someone else. Uh, but we can also track what people are doing so they can't get away with not doing tasks, uh, which is, which is uh, quite important. Um, uh, the next thing, training tools. So training, uh, we have a fantastic training team. We want to help them out as much as we can. We want to start introducing some of these things to the dashboard, which is really quite fun and cool. We can then allow uh, new, new joiners to immediately get on the dashboard, immediately start working and be kind of um, talked through the process as they're doing it, which I think is quite important. Obviously, optimize and iterate. We're constantly trying to do that, and we will always do that. Uh, and then most importantly, inc try and increase that number of uh, customers per cop, um, but tr ensure that we keep those kind of that 50 second, 56 second response time and keep that resolution time at around three minutes and maybe even make it better. 
um, this is really important for a scaling business. We don't want to we don't want to have to grow our um, COPS team exponentially alongside our user base, as that could be incredibly expensive. Um, and then team structure, as I mentioned right at the beginning, how we're, we're not currently happy with how it is, and how we so this is how we want it to happen. So this is what it currently looks like. We've got us in the middle, but probably not in the middle. We're off to the side. We're actually in that back corner. So um, uh, you you then have all the other uh, product teams surrounding that, uh, and we we service all of those teams. Um, we have product manager and me. We have back end and web engineers in that team. And as I said, we manage all of the dashboard stuff um, and make sure that we can we can support the products that we're building. But how we want it to work, uh, this is an example feature team on the left. Uh, obviously looks pretty standard, but then we want to have a web engineer in there that will manage both the website, so how they market it, market the product, right through to then how they support the product um, after it launches. That's really important as we scale. We don't want to have to, because it's a massive bottleneck if you're waiting on a team like us to, to do things for all your different, all these different product teams. Um, then we'll have a scalers team uh, where we'll, we'll handle kind of the end-to-end -end blockers and problems that uh, prevent growth. Uh, and then the frame team, which will handle kind of the underlying technologies uh, and the, the frame of, uh, from which the other teams build off. Um, cool. So our three tips, just to recap everything. Team integration, super important. User interviews, shadowing. Find a way to break the boundaries, uh, as we did with our ECOP. Find a way to get those other kind of stakeholders involved in, in the product team so that you're constantly communicating with them. Um, understanding process, making sure everyone in the business does support, we find is a really useful tip. As you're kind of you're talking to customers firsthand, you're interacting with them, you're finding out problems, uh, but you can also obviously see where your shortcomings are with the with the tools that you're using. Um, user story mapping again, a simple one, finding where the where the where the inefficiencies are, really really useful. Be data driven. Analytics to bolster and validate the quality of feedback you get. Don't just use them on your external products. Use them internally as well. It's really, really handy. Uh, MVP and A-B testing to ensure you don't waste the time building the wrong features before solving the, uh, the problem. Because uh, you could just be solving the wrong problem, which is not good. Cool. So thank you very much. Um, that's all I've got for you guys today. Uh, any questions? Fine. <laughs> Yeah, nice. Hi. Hi. Um, I had a question about, so you mentioned uh, inbound contacts, yeah. which is what your cops handle. Um, do they ever have to deal with outbound contacts, for example, failed verification or account is blocked because of something like that? Or is it handled in the product? No, so every, every issue that comes into the app all comes in through, uh, that our customer operations team have to solve, it all comes through the app. So if a user has a problem, they'll be made aware of that, and then they they uh, contact. They're always told to contact us through support, um, just mainly because we can respond to them so quickly, and it's easier for us to do it that way because we can immediately see what the problem is when we when we view the dashboard, and then can immediately solve the problem. Uh, hopefully. Thank you. That's all right. Anyone else? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, on that topic, I guess, like to to expand, maybe the the other option is to build like self service tool and yeah. to communicate what the issue is to an actual customer to just eliminate. Support. Exactly, exactly. So that's uh, so the scalers team that I showed you at the end. Um, that's what we want to achieve with the scalers team. We're starting to do a little bit with that in one of the with one of the growth teams at the moment um, because my team doesn't have any mobile capability. Um, so that is, that's what we want to achieve with that. And we've actually done that with one thing very recently that's made a big difference. Um, and that's uh, previously, so we, we don't allow you to log in twice, obviously. And if you do and you've got your driver's license on another uh, account, then you can't uh, log in with, an, with, with your same email. So th that was called already exists. So it means you've already got an account and we were getting them all the time. So now we've, we've made a small product iteration in order to try and prevent that. And it's, it's really helped. Thank you. Anyone? Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you.